Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. Before I get into this video, I did want to mention my website, CoreyFrankCreates.com. You can go there and see all the things I offer as an artist, particularly my art shop on Redbubble. I have all different kinds of products on there with my artwork printed on them. And then on my website, if you scroll down to the bottom of any page, you can sign up for my email newsletter and I send that out once a week. Just put in your first and last name, email address, then check your inbox or junk or spam folder for an email with a confirmation link. Once you click that confirmation link, you will be subscribed and get a, no a weekly update from me. So again, I would love if you go and check it out. My website is CoreyFrankCreates.com. Today I have a art tips, tricks, and hacks video for you. And I've seen other artists do this, uh, use this technique before, and I wanted to experiment with it and had so much fun, I had to share it with you. It involves using an old credit card or old photo ID. Since it's a plastic card, it has a nice sharp edge. And you can use that to create texture or lines in your work when using watercolors. You could probably use it with other paints as well. I just particularly used watercolor. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like and I hope you find the tips helpful. To start out, I went ahead and put some paint on my palette, some fresh paint in the center of the wells. And admittedly, I probably should have just put it on a large flat plate. So I would have had a lot of surface area to put the credit card in. Um, and you'll see later on that that brown paint in the bottom panel, um, I put it too close to the edge. But anyhow, I'm starting off with a flat brush and I uh, got the paint fairly wet and I'm just putting a solid field of color. This is cadmium red deep. So it's a nice kind of rosy red hue. And I, you'll just notice I'm going um, overlapping the edges uh, so that part of the brush overlaps with the paint I've already laid down so that it just flows into the next line of paint and creates an even field of color. And this one, you can tell it, uh, the previous edge was a little harder, so I just had to blend it out a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, when you have an uh, even amount of water, even amount of paint, and go back and forth with part of the edge of your brush overlapping the previous line of color you laid down, the color just flows into itself and makes it a nice even field. Uh, but while that was drying, here is the credit card. It's actually a very old um, school ID <laughs> from like middle school. So I went ahead and used that. You dip it in the water and then um, you can run the edge of the card along the paint. And like I said earlier, I should have had that dollop of paint set more in the middle of that kind of rectangle <laughs> because I was having a hard time getting paint in the middle, on the middle of the edge of the card. So I had to kind of try and smear it around several times before I had enough paint. That is a burnt umber. Uh, so just kind of general nice brown. And the paint is fairly thick. So you can see as I lay it down, how much texture there is on that paper. And that is a cold press watercolor paper. So it has a little bit more texture than a hot press paper would. So that helps contribute to the textured look. But with really thick paint, you're gonna get really great texture. And as you can probably tell, it can be ideal for creating aspen trunks, aspen tree trunks. So it's just kind of a fun technique you can use, but you can also just use it for creating texture. If you add a little more water, like I, when my hand went out of the frame there, I dumped the card, the edge of the card in water. So you can tell the paint's a little lighter because it's more watered down and it is smearing a little more easily because the paint isn't quite as thick. So if you water it down, you can get a lighter color and not quite as textured, but it's just a really fun way to add some of these sort of streaky fields of color and uh, just let whatever happens from the card happen. It takes a little bit of control away from you, but it can be fun to see how it works. Now, you want to wait till the field of color you lay down is completely dry. And I'm dipping again, very clean edge of the card. I clean the card uh, and then tapping the excess water off and then just rubbing it back and forth in a sort of sawing motion along your dry field of color. And I'm sorry, my hand's walking a little bit, but there you can see it starts to create a line and you will wanna use either like a towel or a cloth or a paper towel, tissue, something like that 
to blot up the excess uh, water and paint and you can see it creates a textured line in there. Now this one, I didn't tap the card to get excess water off, so there's a lot of water there. And you can see when I dab it up with the towel, it took away a bunch of the paint that was laid down. So there's a lot of texture there, but if you don't want that much of the paint to come off, you do want to tap the card uh, or just very gently blot it on your towel. This is kind of a moderate amount of water. I didn't, I barely tapped it. So again, you get a much thicker kind of line. And then that time I didn't even put it back in the water. That was just from the, um, the third line I did. Putting it back on there again, a sawing back and forth motion to make a very straight line. And then uh, just blotting it up with your towel. And so you can create texture that way with kind of lines and unevenness and pulling paint off the paper. And now this final texture, you can create a very abstract kind of backgrounds and colors. So you're going to get quite a bit of paint and a lot of water on there. So I had um, not even quite enough water that time. So I dunked the card back in the water. You can see there's so much water there. And then it creates almost a waterfall kind of effect. And there's some unevenness that naturally occurs where the thicker paint is. It's a little darker. Where there's less paint, it's a little lighter. And then the edges kind of create this nice textured effect. And obviously, the more paint you have, the more texture. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, God bless, and I'll see you soon.